Good morning, welcome to the channel. That's a little video. I do get asked a lot about people who've never been piking. How do I get going? How do I set up? Do I have to go out to the tackle shop and buy mountains and mountains of expensive gear, etc, etc. So it's just a short video to help the new guys into the sport. You know, it's um, can be daunting. My first advice would be, if you're going to go pike fishing for the first time, go with someone that is confident and experienced at handling pike on the bank. I can't reiterate how important it is the unhooking part of the procedure. When you've got that apex predator out of, the, out of its natural environment and on the bank, fish care is paramount. You have to uh, you have to know what you're doing. You have to know how to handle the pike and you know how to unhook it quickly and safely and get it returned and recovered. Having said that, other than that, you don't need a man in the gear. And I'll go through what you, the absolute essentials are, what you cannot leave the house with, and then <laughs> everything else you can make do with stuff you've already got. If you've been carp fishing and you've been barbel fishing, you'll have some of the terminal gear, you'll have the reels, you'll have the rods, and I'll go through it all with you now. It's not difficult, but these are the things you cannot go pike fishing without. So it goes without saying, if you haven't got a large landing net, 42 inch, don't go. You need a large unhooking mat. They're non-negotiable really. You, you know, if you haven't got the landing net and the unhooking mat, don't go until you have. Also, don't you can't leave the house without your unhooking tools. Now I use single hooks now if you're going to be going fishing for the first time chances are you're going to be buying your traces from a tackle shop and they're going to be double trebles. Now you can't go fishing for pike without these couple of things. I've got some long nose pliers and some long forceps. Now I've got in my bag I've got about four or five pairs of these I've got two pairs of these that's how important they are you need to be able to unhook the pike safely and if you're fishing with a shop bought trace and there's double trebles chances are you're gonna have both of them trebles in the pike's mouth so that's why I said at the start get yourself buddied up if you don't know anyone try Facebook or any of the fishing groups and see if someone would be willing to go with you but you really need these two things, your landing net and your unhooking mat, and these. These are wire cutters. If God forbid that you deep hook a pike. Now if you're fishing with trebles, the simple rule of thumb for me is, I don't use them anymore, but when I was using them, I strike instantly. I get a run, bang, I'm down the water, on my rods and I'm striking and I'm hook and I'm striking into the fish to set them hooks. None of that wait five seconds, wait ten seconds, see how if you're fishing with trebles, strike into the fish straight away. And if you've got these bits of kit on you, it's a doddle. There's loads of videos out there about unhooking pike and say I don't use trebles anymore. I only use single hooks, so I can't really show you how easy it is with single hooks and let's, <laughs> we're going to get fishing soon I promise and then hopefully we'll catch one on a single hook and you'll see how easy it is but the chances are if you've never been before you're going to be using trebles so you can't go fishing without these even if you use the single hooks you have to have these you have to have a landing net and you have to have an unhooking mat having said that everything else you've probably already got and we're going to go through it now right rods for those of you who are as old as me, this is a Fox Range Master. It's a carp rod. It's uh, it, the test curve. I can't. Test curve was written on it donkeys years ago. It's it's come off. It's that old. This rod. I keep spares. Always, I always keep spares in case my pipe rods break or anything. Something go wrong fishing. 
And the point I'm making is, you've all got carp rods like this. This is, I believe, one and three quarter test curve. It might be two pound. It might be a two pound test curve rod. That's it. Now that a carp rod, two, two and a quarter, two and a half, will get you pike fishing anywhere on a river, a stream, canal, drain, small lakes and ponds. They'd be able to do all your work with that, all your casting, everything. The only thing is if you're fishing big places like reservoirs and that and you need to cast dead baits long distances then you're going to need a proper pike rod. But 95% of all your pike applications, short and medium range, your bog standard carp rod will serve you well until you can afford to or until you decide whether you like pike fishing or not and you can go out and buy specialist rods. But your, your carp rod will do you. That's your rod sorted. You've got your own carp rod. Virtually everyone, I'm not saying everyone, but you know, these young lads out there starting out and fishing, maybe haven't got them, but everyone should have probably a free spool reel of some description. As I say, I'm going to set all this gear up and we're going to cast out and we're going to try and catch a pike on camera for you. There's my reel. That's a spare reel I keep in my bag. It's a bog standard free spool reel. Not expensive. That's all you need, reel wise. Line wise, that's a different matter. Now most of you have probably been carp fishing or barbel fishing and your free spool reels are probably loaded up with 15 pound mono. You go and pike fishing, that's another thing you're going to have to outlay for. I would never fish for pike with 15 pound mono. That is Fox Camo Soft Steel line on there. That is £20. No, sorry, my mistake. That is £23 breaking strain. I know nowadays they do it all by um, <laughs> the diameters, but you want something £20 plus, or if you're using braid, £80 to £100 braid. But this mono, this is, I say, this is, I'm not advertising them, this, this is just what I use. For all my big fish fishing. This is Fox Soft Steel Camo. Now I've had catfish up to £75 on this. I've had carp in the £30 on this. I've had pike in the £30 on this. And it's never let me down. It never lets me down. The knot strength is fantastic. The abrasion qualities of it are really good. So you want yourself a really good mono. £20 plus. Now, some people say you can use £15 and if you're, on, if you're on a snag free venue and there's no swan mussels or anything like that or anything that can damage the line underwater, it's iffy. Me personally, I'd go with £20 every time. But you could be fishing a water, this is a, there's always ifs and buts and maybes. <laughs> you could be fishing a local water where the pike only go up to 15 pound. You can only fish for what's in front of you. If that's the case, 15 pound mono will do you. But I'm fishing places where I'm hoping to catch fish in the 20s sometimes. And they put up a hell of a fight pike in a 20 pound bracket and an energetic fight and a vigorous fight. It's not, you know, they're jumping out of the water, they're tail walking, they're diving, you know, so that's all you need is a free spool reel decent mono or decent braid on it and you're ready to go now you've got your rod and your reel you've already got them in your tackle bag so you've got your rod and your reel you've got the line run through what you're going to need to get that bait in the water and successfully target a pike well I'm saying this is pure basics I'm not going to start using pike floats and leisure booms and things like that because chances are you might not have them in your kit if you're thinking about going piking for the first time. But what you will have in your kit is leads. So, you want a lead to suit the venue. 
if it's a small drain, there's not much flow in it, you can use a light lead. Depends on the toe in the water or where, how far you want to cast, all sorts of scenarios. But here we go. But the main, the most important part of the lead is the eye. You want something with a big eye. If it hasn't got a big eye on it, you want a run ring. So you either have one of the two in your, your kit. So they just go straight on the line. And away that goes. Free running leisure rig. That's all you're going to be using. Next bit of kit you want, because you've got a big because you've got a big eye, is a buffer bead. Now if you're carp fishing or barbel fishing or anything like that, you'll have buffer beads in your kit as well. Stick your buffer bead on. Let that go up the line. Now you're ready to put on your trace. It's that easy. To set up a simple run in leisure is that easy. As I said, this is for if you're going piking for the first time. If you've got pike gear and you've been before and you've got pike, or you're thinking of going and you've already bought your stuff and you've got pike floats or you've got leisure stems or leisure booms, and you want to know how to set up them type of rigs. I'll leave in the description of the video. I'll leave a couple of links down there for a few videos I've made. Tying your own traces, setting up your float, stop knots, things like that. I'll leave all the links below for them videos down there for you. So where you're watching the video, you'll see the description of the video and it usually says show more. So you click on that and it'll give you a drop down and all the links will be in there for them videos. But that's it, you've got your you've got your weight, you've got your buffer bead. Now all you want to do is tie your trace on. Yeah, so the chances are you've got a shop bolt trace and you want to put that on. Now you'll have a set of trebles. I only I say I only use single hooks. So that's my trace, single hook. As I say, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to look, tie your own single hooks. That's my trace. Your trace, if you've bought it from a shop with trebles, will still have the same end. It'll have a swivel or a quick link. I prefer, my sw I prefer swivels for some unknown reason. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Just prefer them. And all you want to do is tie your trace on to your main line with your preferred line and your preferred knot. Now mine is Seven loops. Back through on itself. Simple. Moisten it down. And pull it tight. That knot is going nowhere. For your big fishing one of the best knots in the business. I mean you can use any knot you want, Palomar, Grinners, Blood Knots, whatever you like. That's my preferred knot of choice and it's that quink, it's that simple. Tidy it up. And believe it or not, that is it. You are ready to go pike fishing. So what we're going to do, we're going to, I'll run through indication with you and stuff like that. We'll hook a bait up and we shall get fishing. And hopefully, for the cameras, we'll catch you something in the £20 plus range. <laughs> let's see it. Let's, let's get this baited up. I'll show you how I hook a single bait on a single circle hook and then we'll... Uh, run through the presentation, the bite indication, and we'll get it cast out there and we'll be off and running. 
It's got dark all of a sudden, hasn't it? Now, with single hooks, I use a lot of small baits. And here we have a roach. No more than two, three inches at the most. Now you can get sprats that size. You can use bigger baits. I've had three or four ounce roach on the same rig. And there's the hook, single hook. It's on a loop, so you can move any way it wants. And all I do, through the bottom of the jaw, out through the bridge of the nose. And that is, and that is your single hook busy road this isn't it and that is your single hook rig and it's you're baited up with a small roach so you can use a small sprat any coarse fish really or any sea dead and that's it right let me show you the indication you'll need to make this work and we'll get fishing so here we are bog standard bite alarm you all got them in your collection if you're uh, doing, you've been doing carping or barbel fishing or any type of leisuring really that requires the indication. Any bobbin or indicator you like. I change mine depending on the location, you know, it depends how, if it's a river and it's pumping through or a drain pumping through or if it's windy you might want something a bit heavier but basic alarm basic bobbing you ain't got to worry about all those drop back indicators and all that so here we are no camera tricks it's the same rig i showed you same rod same reel and all we're gonna do with this small roach bait we're on a fenland drain at the moment but the principle's the same a gentle cast out I've got to adjust my clutch you can have your clutch too loose but because you can always adjust it but you can't you now if you have it too tight you're in trouble and there we have the final setup straight line from butt to indication to rod tip to bait that's the way you want it so I fish with slack lines where possible don't want any resistance I want the pipe to pick that up got a nice big ring on there so you shouldn't feel any resistance from the weight we want it to pick that up with confidence and go Well, I really hope you uh, found that little short tutorial slash educational video handy. If you want to go piking and you've never been before, as I said, recap the whole video. You've got most of the gear you need already. But I can't emphasise enough. If you haven't got the unhooking tools, don't go. If you haven't got the landing net in the you haven't got the landing net in the large unhooking mat don't go and ideally you want to be going with a experienced angler who knows how to handle the pike on the bank and unhook them and show you how to do that sorry I, I you know we didn't catch one for you today but we only had four hours Fishing's fishing, it's not catching, and you know, sometimes you all the will in the world, you don't make it pay. Now, I can, I mean, I could have come back another day and kept fishing with the same rig, waiting for a fish to come along, but that's not my style. I made the video on the bank for you, hopefully, to stimulate you. Maybe you're thinking, maybe you're half hearted about going pike fishing, you're not sure, you don't want to 
pay out loads and loads of money for gear. I've just explained you don't need loads and loads of gear. You don't need loads and loads of money. But you do need some of the basic essentials and that's the fish care side of things. You need your unhooking tool. You need a pair of wire cutters. You need a large landing net. You need an unhooking net. Other than that, give it a go. You never know. You might love it. You might enjoy it. You might, <laughs> you might, play, you might do better than me. Your first cast, 10 minutes, whoosh. And you're into your first ever pike. But fishing rivers and drains and stuff like that, it's not all plain sailing, you know, it is hard work on these natural venues. You're up against the elements, the weather, time of year, predation, human predation, animal predation, all sorts of obstacles in your way, pike fishing on a natural venue. And you've got to put in some hard slog sometimes. Sometimes it can be absolutely bliss, absolutely wonderful. So if you're thinking about going piking, get out there, enjoy yourself. Absorb the experience, you never know, you might love it. You might hate it, but you might love it. So don't forget, you haven't got to spend bundles of dough. The only thing, if you've been carping or barbel fishing or any type of fishing like that, you're gonna have rods that are adequate for 90% of the work you need to do. You're gonna have the you're gonna have the reel, you're gonna have the weights, you're gonna have the buffer beads, you're gonna so you might have to have an initial outlay of traces. I say I'll leave a link below how to make your own so that you can save a lot more money. But go for it. What's there to lose? Thanks for watching this video. I hope it uh, inspires at least just one person to go pike fishing, take it up, and love it as much as I do. And I'll see you on the bank real soon. Thanks very much.